Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins and I'm happy to bring you this lesson that goes along with our theme in our Monet Cafe art group. We're painting with a Monet style. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, I hope you will. It's a lot of fun. And if you would like to support this channel on my Patreon page, it's only $5 a month. It keeps these free videos coming to an artistically hungry world and my patrons get extra content and I get to see your work. The lovely reference of a field of poppies is from unsplash.com. It's a great site to get copyright free reference images. The photographer is Laura Goodsell. She is from the UK. We're just going to jump right into this lesson. These are my pastels. If you're a patron of mine, you will be getting a downloadable JPEG image of these pastels. Also, it's really a good idea if you're new to convert your pastels to black and white so you can see values better. I'll be talking more about value as I paint, and it truly is more important than color when it comes to successful painting. I'm gonna talk about my products I'm using. This is just a piece of willow charcoal. I love these long sticks of willow charcoal uh, because they really help you to have a more painterly style when you hold it rather loosely like this. I'm actually gonna just hop over to my Amazon shop. I have an Amazon storefront. You can find the link in every video, but in this particular video, and the willow charcoal charcoal is actually under the category of pastels and painting products and these are really all of the products or many of the products that I use in my videos that makes it convenient for you to find and there's the willow charcoal right there and each product I have a little description in the upper right corner vine or willow charcoal is a great preliminary sketching tool for pastel paintings it's better to use charcoal than pencil um, because it's made of the same basic uh, product as pastels. Now, the pastel papers and more section will show you the paper or the surface I'm using. I'm using Pastel Card. It's made by Sennelier. It's a French company. And I love Sennelier Le Carte for its texture. Excellent for animal fur, and I love it for landscapes as well. Now, it's pretty textured, so if you're brand new to pastel painting, and it's also pretty expensive, uh, you may want to try other options. And I actually have made a category, another category that should be helpful for beginner pastel artists. It's called Beginner Basics for Pastel Artists and I have sanded and unsanded surfaces in this category. This is Canson paper. It's an unsanded pastel paper and I know a lot of artists prefer the expensive sanded surfaces but I use unsanded as well. You basically can't get as many layers as the more expensive sanded surfaces but you can still use them and this Canson paper is really good. It comes in multiple colors. Another surface, this is the least expensive of the sanded surfaces. If you don't know what sanded means, it's like sandpaper. <laughs> Some of them are rougher than others though. Um, I haven't actually used Pastel Premier, but many artists say that it's great. So it's, I put it up here because it's not very expensive and I thought it might be a good start if you wanted to give it a try. So there's many other products on here. You can also make your own pastel surfaces. I have water watercolor paper up here because often I will paint with watercolor on watercolor paper and then I'll use another product to paint over my watercolor painting that will create a sanded texture and that product is this next one in line. It's clear gesso. It's the cheapest and easiest way to make your own pastel surface. I have a lot of videos on how to do this. One video here on the YouTube channel is eight ways to make your own pastel surface and this is one of the techniques with clear gesso so there's so many options don't get overwhelmed because it's all here on monet cafe for you to learn just take it a step at a time all right so pardon that station break but i love to give you guys information i think many of you are really hungry to learn more and you need to know about these products and where to find them and I am now just using this willow charcoal to get a super basic uh, composition in. I'm looking at the big shapes and I'm just sketching in where some of the flower heads will be, just the ones that I think are the most important for the composition or they're larger. And I don't really get fussy over this. I'm trying to keep the energy of this composition more so than really get super detailed with anything. And if you want another uh, series of videos, actually, I have a four-part course 
Um, right now, currently, I'm on part two. It's called Pastel Painting 101, and it talks a lot about these beginning stages, and it's a lot of it's more about just painting in general, not just pastel painting, but I think it'll give you a good foundation as to some of the things that I'm even doing here. We want to keep that life and that movement and that energy, and back to our topic, our subject matter is to how to create more impressionistically, and that's one of the keys, is to give it life by having gestural marks and marks that have life and movement and energy and really I have another video I think it might be just for my patrons sometimes my patrons get extra content and extra videos but I have a video on the beginnings of impressionism and it wasn't received very well to begin with because many artists found it to be unfinished messy or uh, haphazard and to me, the impressionistic work, now I do appreciate realistic painting too, like photorealism, that is just a talent all it's in itself. But I think I love the fact that impressionism seems to capture more of the moment and the feeling, but the beginning works had so much more life and motion to them. Um, so I think that's what people are drawn to. It's an interpretation of the moment and the feeling, not just uh, what a photograph could actually capture, you know, if we had a, a camera with us. So I do believe that is one of the beautiful things about the impressionistic style of painting. And Monet, of course, is one of my favorites because my channel's named Monet Cafe, or that's one of the reasons my channel is named that. And also, the reason Monet Cafe, I'm going to talk more about this painting, I promise. The reason the Monet Cafe art group on Facebook, or really in general, we have our theme as Monet this month, is because it's his birthday on November 14th the month that I'm making this particular video. So happy birthday, Monet. And uh, let me get to talking about this. You guys really do need to know what I'm doing. As I mentioned before, this Sennelier Le Carte pastel surface is very textured and sanded. That's one of the reasons I like it. I think it lends itself to an impressionistic style, which is why I chose it for this particular video. And all I'm doing here is using a dark pastel. I actually am using two different colors. One was a little more purple and one's a little bit more, um, I would say more of a mauve -y purple. And I'm basically just getting in some of my darkest values. A way to find those values, value just means the degree of lightness or darkness. Okay, so I'm working on my darkest values, but the way to see those is to squint, squint your eyes and look at the reference image. By the way, you can probably see the reference image is more of a square and I wanted mine to be a longer um, portrait layout. So I just, it's kind of easy to change things like this when it's flowers, you know, you just kind of reach things up a little bit higher. So if you squint your eyes and look at the reference image, you can obviously see that those trees in the distance are darker. There's also darker areas in the foreground and a little hint of some sort of a valley or trail kind of going through those grasses. And I kind of wanted mine to curve. So it can start out often looking rather messy, uh, but actually this is just the underpainting stages that lends itself towards that life. These flowers are not so stiff. They're reaching and they're, um, they're moving. You know, I always think of wind when I'm painting, like something's blowing these flowers in the wind. Now this tool that I'm using here is a piece of pipe foam insulation, literally what you could buy at a hardware store, and it's just a good blending tool. It works well on sanded surfaces. I have other tools I use for blending on unsanded paper, such as a chamois cloth. Sometimes I'll use packing, packing peanuts that you, you know, cushion your packages with. And a lot of people have said they use a pool noodle, like they, your kids float on in the pool. It's kind of the same consistency as this pipe foam insulation. But I don't over blend because I feel like it flattens and dulls the beauty of those gorgeous pastel colors. But often with beginning layers, I like to kind of get it covered. You see how I blended it and got some of the more um, lighter to middle values um, on the field a little bit. And it might look weird with those trees where I'm working right now. But remember, I left some space for some of those poppies to reach up. I, I'm going to be 
painting over the trees anyway and I do have layering capability but I really wanted those few right there where the trees were to pop so I didn't want that dark background behind those um, stars they're the stars of the show some of those upper poppies there and now I'm just continuing to blend and uh, now I've just got me kind of a little basic underpainting beginnings of a value study and now I'll start adding in some of the poppy heads and uh, get kind of a general direction and a feel for these flowers also too all of this has been real time with the exception of the sketch at the beginning um, but I am going to speed it up just a bit to be able to keep my video um, size or time not quite so long this painting took a little over an hour to paint so um, this way I'll have it maybe like 30 minutes or so all right so now I've got these gorgeous Terry Ludwig pastels I think I've been using all Terry Ludwig pastels so far uh, if it looks if you're used to Terry Ludwig pastels you'll be like why is it so little I often will break my pastels um, sometimes to be able to put some in a travel set and I find these little half sizes are actually uh, very good for um, the way that I paint you may want to keep the sticks whole but I decided to lose that one poppy they were all too much in a row and um, so I'm going to kind of reposition them but that's the great thing about this pastel paper you really have a lot more flexibility um, than people would think you see how that red went right over that dark uh, so you still have the ability to add pastels or add poppy flower heads if you didn't leave room for them they'll go right over this other pastel um, but I basically left the blank so I'd remember where to put them and I'm just really um, giving these loose gestural strokes notice these are just shapes that's all they are don't get overwhelmed with um, anything other than just a general shape of what you see I often um, try to express and share that something I learned uh, through my painting journey is try to paint what you see not what you think you see often we think we have an idea in our head about what a poppy looks like or a certain flower variety and try to look at what they look like in the photo not that we're trying to do photorealism but I'm talking about the gesture the motion the movement how they're turned we like to have variety in where our flowers are facing I think of them as having faces and so uh, we want to make sure we capture that in our painting and we don't have to spell everything out either that's part of impressionism a photograph tends to focus everything unless you have your own um, camera and you're able to adjust the aperture shutter speed things like that you can change what it focuses on but typically when something is on an auto setting uh, a camera is going to try to focus everything well that's not what we want to do in our painting we want to choose the area of our focal point and like I said for me it's uh, really the flowers that are reaching up above the kind of horizon line there and um, then give some you know uh, supporting characters uh, other things in the um, painting that you might want to get some attention but the things that are your focal point are going to have the most detail not that it has to have a lot but more than what's in the rest of your painting they're going to have the most contrast and typically they're going to be you want them to be in an area of interest like in an upper third usually not right in the middle of your painting um, just for composition interest and beauty uh, now I'm adding some of the more magenta colors these are going to be the poppies that are in shadow now if I had every single poppy that bright red like like the one I'm using now by the way this is a different red you may have noticed well you can see in my little color notes over there you see like three that look red well they're different varieties of red it's a little hard to see with that by the way if you're a patron of mine I'm gonna give you a copy of these color notes along with the picture of my actual pastels and I'm gonna give you a key or a, a clue to the key the TLs um, and some of the other notes that I'll make there you'll know what all of the pastels are but anyway so these magenta burgundy kind of colors down low are where some of these poppies are going to be buried they're going to be in shadow remember there's lots of grasses growing up and we kind of have that little um, perspective of being down low in the grasses and if every single flower was that bright red they would feel like they're pasted on top 
so we've got to give that impression that some of the flowers are buried and also that's taking away um, from uh, purposely taking away from them getting too much attention we really don't want anything other than a suggestion of many of these flowers right now you see how really lightly these are totally just little suggestions of poppies now later you're going to even see me uh, even suggest more the flowers that are in the distance they're really going to be more of a band of flowers not even uh, individual flowers anymore uh, because things in the distance they lose their detail and they also get closer uh, or they appear to be all closer together because they're far away so you're just going to have little bands of poppies in the distance and now I have a little bit of a road map as to where things are and uh, and that was really pretty easy right it's it's really not that hard once you learn some of these rules most of the learning is learning what supplies to get and learning how to layer and you know general rules but uh, really often we overwork our paintings they are more beautiful when we can learn to simplify and um, not overemphasize or detail things and you can see I'm obviously adding some greens notice I'm not painting individual blades of grasses I realized I wanted more contrast where those poppies are reaching up there so I'm adding a little bit more of this Terry Ludwig dark color it's called eggplant it's a dark dark purple even though it appears black and I've added uh, I think a little bit more of it into some of the deeper grasses but that green that I added before notice that it's a, a, a deeper um, uh, not a real yellowy green it's a cooler green because of the grasses being buried they're in shadow I often say um, when we're in shadow we cool off if we're in the shade of a tree and that's exactly what colors do as well they get cooler they get less uh, towards the warm side of the color wheel not as much yellow um, or orangey tones so these are cooler greens that I'm using this is another cool green because this is kind of the back side of these trees with respect to the direction of the Sun and that's why they're keeping the cooler temperatures and a little bit of the darker greens and all you have to do is suggest with this too I just basically look at the tree and think where is it um, not quite so dark in the deep shadow and I just add shapes once again it's just little shapes and little directions of uh, of color and now I'm gonna pull in some of uh, those still a cooler green notice it doesn't look real yellowy green it's it's kind of a neutral green but it's a lighter value and values with pastel painting we typically as a general rule of thumb we can work dark to light for example when you're doing things like trees um, in my latest videos that I've been doing a pastel 101 course um, I talk about how vertical elements are usually darker in value such as trees and with pastels we paint our darker value and then we layer the lighter values on top and basically the reasoning for that is it it causes the lighter values to have something to contrast against these greener cooler green grasses that I'm laying down wouldn't even look the same if I just put them on the surface without a, a darker underpainting underneath it it makes them show up you know and it makes the color uh, more interesting and uh, now I'm adding some of these gorgeous blues in the sky isn't that a beautiful it's kind of a a teal uh, turquoisey blue and this is an example of what's called negative painting or what's often known as sky holes when you're painting trees notice I didn't try to get the tree shapes just right I basically just got my my darker value in for the tree and now I'm negatively carving in the little spaces and I don't need a lot because these are far away um, and again this is what's going to lend to that impressionism when I'm not spelling everything out I'm leading the viewer where I want to lead them and leaving everything else a bit more subdued now the way uh, skies typically work is things in the upper sky are usually of a darker value now keep in mind skies are lighter uh, altogether in general than the foreground the value will just be a hint darker as it goes upward into the heavens and I think so far I've only used three different colors you can see them on my little color notes over there 
and I'm gonna add in I felt like it needed a little bit of purple in the sky up there so I grabbed me a, a couple of purples and I'm just going to lightly layer some purple kind of up high now normally skies are cooler in the upward areas of the sky and they get warmer down closer to the horizon but uh, that purple is actually kind of a warmer purple but I still thought it would look nice now I'm I'm lightening up the sky a little bit with a lighter purple down as you get closer to the tree line and I just thought it added some color interest to the sky not to have just the turquoise alone I thought it was kind of fun now let's get some of these warmer grass tones notice how this green is leaning more towards yellow and also noting notice I'm still not really doing individual grass blades I'm giving directional strokes that could suggest grasses but I resist the urge to give any individual uh, individuality to the grasses until closer to the end I also am not bringing those lighter greens down into the painting um, the lower part of the painting because remember those are in um, shadow now I I did what happens often sometimes or often our brains have a tendency to put things in patterns even when we're trying not to <laughs> you know it's really it's really interesting and we don't want our flowers to look so patterned like that we want them to have some spontaneity and randomness so that's all you have to do to get rid of some pastel I just used a stiff bristle brush brushed off the red and just put a little bit more dark in front of it and now I'm going to relocate this flower um, just to be somewhere else so they're not so equally distanced apart and uh, now I've got some of the more of the main flowers in and what I'm going to do now is I know there's a lot of poppies in this field and I but I don't want to paint every poppy head so this is what I was talking about before where I'm going to be layering poppies in the distance and suggesting that there's a whole lot of poppies um, just all real close together and again I'm not giving them too much detail or individuality they're just basically suggestions and to me if I had to come up with one word or concept when it comes to impressionism um, this is just the Susan Jenkins uh, definition here okay so I, I'm sure there are many out there but it would be to suggest and if I had to pick a second one it would be to keep the life um, to keep the gesture and the motion and uh, even if that means uh, veering away from the photo a bit to give that more energy once again that's in my uh, pastel 101 pastel painting 101 uh, free videos that I have I'm still only on uh, lesson number two even though the rest have been uh, created I'll have them uploaded soon but it's a four course lesson on again painting in general but also uh, a lot of it is geared toward how to create that um, life that we're trying to get in our artwork to create a painterly end result so check those videos out um, if you can and now you can see these are just poppy shapes and some are a little bit more uh, spelled out than others and I will be adding um, some stems to these flowers so they're not flying off into the air and also I will be adding some centers but not to all of them just to a few and to some specific few that will lead the eye into the painting and up to my focal area um, and now here are some more cooler greens that I'll be using for some of the grasses and really there's not a lot more to it than that I end up at the end um, giving more grasses uh, than I I, I had hoped I would <laughs> I have this advantage of being able to look back at my videos and go oh aha I should have I should have stopped there or I wish I'd have taken a different direction here and I did want to say something about these reds I mean it may appear um, from this video that there's just one color red but they're really three 
very slightly different values and color temperatures of red. And I typically put the darkest one down first, and then I use the lighter or brighter, I should say. They're not necessarily lighter, they're brighter in color. Um, I put those down to where the highlights would be, to where the sun would be hitting on a petal here, there, here and there. And so that's also going to give focal interest to some flowers rather than others. Um, and these uh, Terry Ludwig reds, mostly the ones that I'm using, are from the Terry Ludwig dark set. They, Terry Ludwig makes a wonderful pastel. They're made in the, in the United States. It's a great company, great people. Um, and I believe this is a, a warmer value red right here. I'm just adding to some of the tops. It's going to make them stand out a little bit more. And especially the ones that are reaching up over, they're going to have a little bit more light on them. Oh, and back to the Terry Ludwig dark sets. There's two of them. I believe, I may be wrong on this. I believe the reds are in set number two, but you can check that out. But it has some wonderful reds in it. Um, I think also too, I have got to get the, um, it's a Karen Margulis um, curated set of Terry Ludwig's and she uh, does so many beautiful flower paintings and I think she, she has to have some great reds in that set because she does a lot of poppy paintings too. So uh, I believe um, those are some good sets if you want to get some good reds, but there are plenty of other great reds. I love the uh, Sennelier pastels. It's the same company that makes this paper. Um, I love the set. It's called the Paris Collection. It is a great price right now. Now, I don't know when you'll be watching this video, but I have it on my Amazon shop under pastel um, pastels and other painting products or something like that. I also have it in the beginner um, beginner basics for pastel artists set, um, but it's the Paris Collection Sennelier set. It's 120 half sticks, which I like, and you get double the color for your money because they're half um, instead of the full stick. And uh, I believe it's like $160, which is really a great buy for a pastel of that quality. So if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, they're, they're on sale and they're still on sale if you see this video relatively quickly. Um, but I love um, the reds in that set. And um, so a lot of this is just playing around. And I can tell you, every set of pastels that I've ever bought, I still use today. They may not be always my favorites, but they have their different um, reasons to use them. I still use my Rembrandts that I bought as my very first set. It's a, it is a good starter set to use. They're not quite as soft and as vibrant as some of the softies, but um, a lot of this is trial and error. And as I always say, have fun. Uh, don't get so caught up in it and frustrated and, you know, it, it makes your work look tight also. Uh, but just remember, it's all a learning process. You learn something with every painting, even if you're not happy with the final result. Okay, now you can see I've got one of these uh, warmer greens. These are going to be more like for the, the little bit of the stems. I'm just suggesting them. And some of the tops of the grasses, the, those uh, tops of the areas of the grass where they're kind of sticking up and they're not down deep into the uh, where the roots of everything are growing from. And um, I think you can see this already has an impressionistic feel of, um, and I hope kind of a Monet feel. Uh, I love the impressionistic artist and pieces and I am happy to see how many people in our Monet Cafe art group on Facebook and my patrons from my Patreon page are taking up the challenge. The challenge, uh, this month's painting challenge, was to paint with a Monet style, kind of like this, which is loose and impressionistic, or to recreate from a Monet painting that you love. And I find that uh, often you think, oh, we can't copy other people's work. Well, no, we can't copy it and sell it or claim it as our own, but we can learn so much from emulating another artist or recreating one of their pieces. And that's what a lot of the artists are doing in the Monet Cafe art group. And they're sharing their work and it's so fun to see. And my patrons, oh my goodness, you guys have shared some great work in our homework album. I love that I, uh, the Monet Cafe group, the Facebook group is so big. It's like, I think it's 14,000 plus members. So I love to look at everything, but I don't have time to go and comment on your work and all of that. Um, but with my patrons, it's a more intimate group. And I, I try very hard to give feedback on your paintings and uh, it just blesses me. We're like a little family. Um, so anyway, you can see this is an even lighter and a little bit cooler red that I'm just 
gently layering on some of the tops of the poppy. It's really giving some color interest. I'm going to see if I can zoom in a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. Okay, so this should help you to see things a little more clearly. You see I'm just giving little hints of that cooler red just here and there. Um, it's a little bit lighter in value and a tad cooler in color temperature. Uh, and I just sort of liked it. I thought it was a pretty color. Um, now I've got some brighter, even brighter um, reds that uh, it's a little bit more of an orangey red. It's got a little more warmth to it. And I'm giving it to little areas. I'm, I am looking at the reference photo and I'm seeing where some of the um, lighter highlights would be on some of these poppies. And I'm just kind of sprinkling it here and there. Uh, and it is kind of giving some differentiation from some of the flowers. And that's what we're really doing. We're, we're picking a few that will stand out to make a pleasing composition. And the rest, like I said, are supporting actors. I did even grab a little bit lighter of, um, it's almost like a coral color. Uh, it's not super light and that's one thing I want to stress. You can see where I made a mark there. Uh, we have a tendency to think, oh, the sun's shining on it. Let me get a white, <laughs> you know, or a really light pink. And it's not going to look really natural. Um, now I wanted to kind of bring some congruency from the sky um, to some of the other painting. And I think this is where we can break out our artistic license. I know there were some cooler areas of these grasses. So I took some of the teal from the sky and I just kind of filtered it in there with some little gentle strokes. And I think you can see it gives more interest to the painting. And I will admit this is a stage of the painting uh, if I'd have done just a little bit more, I do kind of wish I'd left it at this because to me this is more of Impressionism uh, where everything's not spelled out and the color is just working together and there is not a lot of detail. But I did add more grasses and more little poppy heads and I was happy with the final, but these are always my little notes to self. It's a good idea to take a little break when you've been painting for a little while, walk away, um, do something else for a minute and come back and then you seem to um, view your painting with fresh eyes. So now I'm using a Diane Townsend pastel and well I was, it, it, they're big chunky pastels and I really uh, like using them. It forces you not to get too detailed because they're large, you know, and you're making more broad strokes rather than skinny individual strokes. Now you can see this is kind of a purple color. And what I'm doing is some of those um, poppy buds or heads that are buried within the grasses, they're a little darker. So I'm just sprinkling a few of those here and there. And now I've zoomed in so you can see how I'm adding these little highlights on the tops of some of these uh, grasses and poppy buds that are sticking up over the flowers and other grasses and this was a lot of fun. I brought the painting out into my yard because I felt like the lighting was better. It was one of those overcast days and those are really the best days if you want to photograph your art. So I hope you learned something from this. I hope you'll try this loose impressionistic style. I hope you'll subscribe if you haven't already. Become a patron if you'd like to support this channel and if you create from any of my videos find me on Instagram and tag me. I love to see your work. I am at Susan Jenkins Artist. All right guys, happy and blessed painting.